Hi, I'm Faisal Khan, Cisco Collaboration Instructor at VoicebootCamp.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the overview of a Cisco Collaboration Solution Architect. Now, there are various, various components in Cisco Collaboration that you need to have a proper understanding their role, what they do, and how they function. Uh, the system architecture lays the foundation upon which all components of Cisco Unified Communication and Collaboration Systems are deployed. Now, Cisco Collaboration Solution incorporates several advanced applications and services uh, that include Cisco Unified Communication Manager, Cisco Unified Presence Services and Instant Messaging for uh, Jabber, and then you of course have various other applications such as Unity Connection for Voicemail, Expressway, CNE for uh, Collaboration Edge, uh, Cisco Meeting Server and so and so. The figure that you see right here is basically shows you all the different different devices. For example, here you got uh, the deploy management. Uh, let me go ahead. So you got the management uh, de devices that allows you to do automation of the automating of installation and provisioning of end users. You have your call control that could include things like call manager or Cisco Unified Communication Manager to register the phone. You have instant messaging, which is of course for uh, chat and uh, Java uh, client. So like that, various, various components within your infrastructure that you have to be familiar with. Now let's go a uh, little bit, talk, discuss a little bit details about each one of those components. Now we, we will go more details about them uh, throughout the course but this will give you summary of high level summary of some of those components. Now first we're going to talk about call control. Now what call control does? First of all, call control is provided by two products. One, you got Cisco Unified Communication Manager, which is for endpoints such as IP phone to register. And then you have a Java client, which is for Java to uh, register with um, instant messaging and uh, IM and presence. Now the call control will provide registration, call processing, resource management, instant messaging, presence for users and endpoints. It also encompasses remote site serviability server, server for uh, branch offices. So typically call control product that you have are going to be IM and presence, uh, which will be the center point of communications. Then of course you have conferencing. Uh, conferencing allows you to have three or more parties to communicate via voice or video, as well as constantly sharing the screens in real time. Now, resources in either can be on-premises or on cloud. So you could either use on-premise conference bridge internally for your organization, or you can integrate with WebEx uh, for uh, online meeting. Now for conferencing, you could use products like Tele uh, Cisco Meeting Server. Uh, TMS is a solution that allows you to provision your conference and uh, resources or bridges, which is a separate Windows-based product. Uh, web-based uh, solution and then of course you have your uh, hosted solution from Cisco WebEx uh, for example WebEx cloud meeting WebEx calling WebEx uh, cloud uh, calendaring all those features are uh, can be integrated with your uh, on-site uh, data center so if you take a look at this here you got um, your enterprise conference solution somewhere right here you got Cisco meeting server which is basically your call uh, manage uh, your conference bridge. Um, you will use that uh, to provide conferences internally to your organization. And to manage that, you would be using product like Cisco Telepresence Management System. Now there's one new product that Cisco has included in version 12.5, is called Cisco Con uh, Meeting Management System, or CMS Management, basically ma managing the CMS system. Now, you also have connection to external WebEx, which you can integrate with uh, UCC, uh, your on-premise on um, infrastructure. The next we're gonna talk about is Collaboration Edge, is to allow users from outside to register to devices, uh, call, call control devices inside your firewall. So Collaboration Edge will provide remote registration services, external communication, and interoperability issue. So for example, you got employee who are working from home, they could use the internet to come into Expressway uh, E and then Expressway C via that it can come in and register to the call manager internally. internally. 
as if they are internal, uh, they are inside the organization. The, one of the advantage of using Expressway E and C is that you don't have to depend on VPN server. So uh, any sort of VPN solutions. You simply need a Java client or a soft client which will then regist register across the internet using SSL protocol or T over TLS uh, and connect it to your organization as if they are internally but yet providing a secure communication. So we will talk about a lot of details about Expressway C and E in one of the other modules of CCNP collaboration but we will, we will give you a high level overview about in terms of how to use that product to interconnect all these devices. So this is what the collaboration edge will do. Then of course you have a voice messaging uh, which is your provided by Cisco Unity Connection. Uh, Unity Connection can provide voice messages, unified messaging all under the same platform. Now of course Unity Connection is mostly designed to work with internally organ organization but it is a SIP based device so it can communicate with any other third party call control device. Now, Prime Collaboration Deployment, which is basically help you manage Unified Communication Manager application. It is designed to allow user to perform certain tasks, such as migrating user, uh, older software to the new version, upgrading installation, fresh installation, um, changing the IP address, changing host name. So Prime Collaboration kind of falls into the management aspect of your call uh, Unified Collaboration architecture. Now I actually love that product because it allows because we are a training company and we have like 300 virtual machines in Voice Bootcamp and we have about 10 different pods. So what we do is we use a prime collaboration deployment to deploy call manager servers every I don't know 30 days for example. So we will delete the older classes and then re redeploy it all at once. Typically you really don't have to do much all we have to do is clean up the hard drive uh, re-add a new hard drive and then do the uh, deployment uh, your virtual machine is already there your EC ESXi host from VMware is already there all the prime collaboration does goes to the server and redeploy and you now have a full uh, solution I could actually deploy 30 servers in a matter of uh, one click now Cisco uh, Collaboration Management Services, internet-based, web-based portal that provides simplified enterprise-wide management of licensing, smart licensing, allows you to uh, collaboration product to communicate with a central licensing system. So now, before you had to generate license and everything internally within a uh, license prime license manager. Now Cisco use something called Cisco Smart uh, so Smart Software Manager, license manager. So basically, you will go to Cisco website, you will uh, generate a license for your call man Unified Communication Manager. Uh, and once you generate that based on your, let's say, whatever your license key or product key, you will then gen uh, get a, some sort of registration code. And you take that code, you come into Call Manager, you supply that information, it will go and register and uh, authenticate with the license manager. Something we will look into that in a later case. Cisco Prime Collaboration Provisioning, which allows a rapid configuration of your uh, collaboration system by providing a centralized template-based console for system configuration. It allows you to configure user and device provisioning with a template so that you can Im immediately push the config. It will then go to all the sites and deploy uh, all the locations or devices and configure those systems for you. And imagine if you, have a, if you are a bank and you have a, a, a template for a branch office, what a branch office configuration is supposed to look like. Well, you can configure the branch office uh, template within a provisioning. And whenever there's a new branch office comes up, you simply push that template and it will go to uh, configure into, into the call manager, configure everything for that particular branch the way your standard configure sh uh, should be. So that's very useful uh, when you are doing a large deployment, addition, MACD changes, for example. Now security. Of course, security applies in all the components uh, from the endpoint, such as the phone, to Java, to call Unified Communication Manager, Presence, Unity. Every device has some sort of security requirement. And it is a, is a most important aspect of your collaboration architecture. 
security incorporate the compliance compilations compilations of your security features uh, ranging from features that in, are enabled by default and they don't enable some are that are not enabled by default that you may require based on your requirement you want to secure your physical security secu phys you want to provide physical security of your devices along with of course logical security you also want to provide toll fraud protections because a lot of employees sometimes can misuse the system and create uh, uh, unnecessary uh, expense for the company by calling a number, uh, calling, I guess, destination that they, he or she are not supposed to or does not apply to their job description. You want to secure the connectivity with the system using certificate. Now you can generate a certificate locally within call manager or you can incorporate the certificate from uh, or buy the certificate from third party vendors such as GoDaddy, VeriSign or um, Amazon certificate management server. So it enables all sorts of encryptions capability within the system. Now obviously if you are dealing with audio and video you need to concern about your bandwidth management. Now bandwidth management will incorporate the end-to-end -end QoS mechanism as well as call admission control to restrict oversubscription. You want to apply a necessary QoS for voice call to be treated better than data, for example, or video can be treated as audio should there be a bandwidth problem. All those things need to be configured, uh, considered when you are deploying a bandwidth management. Sizing, building an infrastructure based on your growth. I mean, obviously, you know, today you might have 500 employee, tomorrow you want my, uh, five five month down the road or two months down the road two years down the road you might grow so you need to make sure that you size you know when you are sizing your collaboration solutions that you always think about a couple of years ahead what will happen and how much uh, i can uh, you know ex create a solution that will meet that requirement so sizing cisco provides collaboration sizing tool that allows you to uh, put some information and it will give you an idea as to what sort of information uh, devices you need to buy How many licenses you need to purchase? What should be your CTI ports your IVR license all sorts of details? So very useful tools and you are if you are someone who's going to work on as a solution architect uh, You're probably going to spend a lot of time size using the sizing tool to provide a proposal to customers so that's pretty much a summarization of your Cisco uh, various components within the collaborations. We are going to go deep into each one of those components as we go through this course. And until then, I will see you in the next video.